So I want to start with a, a macroeconomic update, as we always do, because we want to start wide and go narrow. I heard a great quote this uh, this week from uh, Brad Gerstner, um, and it wasn't even his quote. He was quoting somebody else. He says, he says uh, if you don't do macro, macro will do you. So we need to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world, um, what's really going on in the world, because we don't get the truth from the news anymore on on what's really happening so let's let's look at a, a variety of different uh countries here um in germany i've uh, been in a recession a retail recession there we've had retail sales declines every month uh for the last year with the exception of october now those were tough comparisons uh with 22 uh because of the influx of refugees uh there but still uh down um and down almost every month in, in retail sales the uk had a surprise up in january after being down every month um so it's kind of been up and down uh for the last three months there but it's showing improvements uh the the swings are not as great as they were uh in france the olympics can't come fast enough they've been down the last 18 months in retail sales there Spain and Italy are up, but they're facing some really tough comparisons coming up. Um, you know, it's interesting. They put all these rules in Spain, Italy, and Greece, um, and even France related to travel, uh, particularly because they were overwhelmed with the uh, U.S. travelers coming to Europe the last two years. And the, the reality is, is those people are not coming back this year, and their numbers are going to be down considerably uh, for tourism. So if you're based in England... Um, the holidays will not be nearly as crowded as they were previously, um, simply because the U.S. group doesn't have the money to travel uh, like it did last year, where it overwhelmed um, everything from the Parthenon um, to the Greek Isles and, and all points in between there with, uh, with tourists uh, that took advantage of that. Uh, Poland continues to see growth um, after being down about 10 months. Um, a lot of a lot of what they're doing is really starting to take hold and um, they're up three percent in january which is we're really the star of europe right now in terms of in terms of retail growth hungary is up uh, they were up for the first time in a long uh recession that they've been faced due to their uh, isolationism from the rest of the eu related to the war now moving to asia China uh, claims to be up in December 7.4%. What's interesting is they skipped the January release. Um, China's hurting, and there's a lot of bad data uh, that's coming out of China right now. Um, people don't want to do the jobs, some of the jobs that, that are in place from a manufacturing standpoint. There's a lot of movement of manufacturing and deleveraging of China that we'll talk about a little bit, um, uh, moving away to India and Vietnam. But there's also the fact that the internal consumers are not spending at the levels um, that the government expected. And then you add in the real estate issues that they're facing and, uh, and the fact that they skipped their uh, January release of information. Um, things are a, a bit worse than what's being reflected in the data there. India, it continues to grow and boom. Uh, there. They're benefiting, like I said, from a lot of this manufacturing moving away from China. So there's an influx of, of international money. Uh, Apple uh, coming over with new plants and, and other things there. Also, as we look at all this data that has to be cleaned for AI, that's uh, helping the uh, services sector as well. Japan is, is continues to grow at 2.3%. They've had growth the last 21 months there but that growth is slowing dramatically and they're literally looking at um doing uh some sort of stimulus package for the economy uh there um south korea continues to uh be seeing some uh some slowdown and has been for a while as consumer debt um and the low exports are, are taking uh impact and then you've got an aging population there uh, that's really what China is going to be facing here soon, and Japan has faced for a long time uh, there that is impacting the economy. <coughs> Vietnam is the star of Asia, uh, continues to benefit from the deleveraging of China uh, there from a manufacturing standpoint, and really has grown every month for about 21 straight months, 22 straight months, uh, significant growth there. And then Australia, um, and the New Zealand area continues to be positive. 
Um, not not really huge positive, but still positive, which is uh, a change from where we saw during the pandemic. When we go to LATAM, uh, two countries here, Brazil and Mexico, uh, Brazil continues to see uh, growth, uh, although very modest. In Mexico, um, it started to see some decline for the first time in about two years uh, there as they've slowed. Uh, their, their growth was much higher than Brazil. They're also benefiting from some nearshoring uh, there in their economy. Um, however, we're starting to see a slowdown of travelers, once again, from the U.S. Uh, coming to Mexico that is also slowing things. So <clears throat> that gives you an idea, <clears throat> excuse me, of overall. Sorry, I'm coming off of COVID, and I hope the voice lasts for, for things here. So let me take a quick drink. When we look at things uh, here, it, it's it's hard to divorce ourselves in terms of the pandemic spending. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, Europe uh, was much more modest in what they did compared to the U.S. <clears throat> there, Germany 500 billion, UK 500 billion. Overall, um, about two and a half trillion dollars across the whole EU uh, in terms of and in, in UK there in terms of spending to come out of the pandemic. Not so in the U.S. We spent five trillion dollars, over five trillion dollars in the U.S. Uh, here. <clears throat> now, to put that in perspective, what blows your mind and what blew my mind? What we spent coming out of the pandemic is greater in today's dollars than what America spent on the New Deal and World War II. This number just blew my mind when you consider that, particularly if you're watching like Masters of the Air um, and other World War II documentaries and all the ships and everything happening from the wars uh, there and just the massive undertaking that World War II was to think that we spent more money in government handouts um, due to the pandemic than that, caught, that war cost is really uh, incredible. So why that? Why is that critical? Because all of those things drive inflation. So this shows you what the inflation rate was in January in uh, most of the European areas. Uh, poor Turkey seeing just incredible amounts of inflation, not dissimilar to what we've seen in Argentina and Venezuela in the past as well. But you look at most of the inflation rates are somewhere in the in the two to five range. Uh, there across the continent. <clears throat> Canada seen a, a surprise reduction in the January rate. They're coming down um, there to 2.9, uh, which was a surprise because most, most people saw that as a, be a little bit higher. So we may see their February number dip back up again uh, there because this was quite a surprise. And then in the U.S. yesterday, they released the numbers and it dipped back up from 3.1 to 3.2. Uh, for all items uh, there and, and the core uh, down to 3.8%. But so it's not moving as fast as the Fed would like. And there's some sticking points there that are driving things. And I think the things that should be a little bit of concerning is we see the inflation rate on a per month basis continue to increase after being at, a, at the least amount in October. And so uh, the resilience of some of these sectors and, and price increases, particularly when you have price increases at the start of the year, um, that hits. And um, that's, a, that's an issue. When you look deeper at the numbers here, the encouraging thing for consumers is, is that the numbers related to food have dropped. A similar, uh, at least in February, energy dropped. Now, gas is going back up in the last two weeks uh, considerably as they change grades, but it's also spring break. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that, but it, as a monthly basis, that was that was lower. Also notice as you go down here, uh, lower to apparel, apparel was flat. Um, so when you look at the things that are specific to retail, the retail specific inflation is almost nil um, now when it comes to the vast majority of our categories. 
But all, as always, I always like to follow Truflation. I think they do a much better job than the government does right now. This is like a Nielsen Reports type of pricing uh, service. And they have the current inflation rate at 1.65. It was as low as 1.59. And it, once again, popped up just slightly higher. And since before the pandemic, things are up about 24% in cost across all of the categories according to truflation and i think that's reflected in the in the disconnect between what the government is saying um in terms of these numbers and how positive they are is they're touting this wage and salary increase is greater than the prices dropping however when you look at the data over time and you look over the last three years the wages uh, at a growth rate of 14.5% um, over that time frame. And we certainly have not seen that in the information sector, uh, that that uh, wage rate uh, growth. It's in, in other sectors, maybe our frontline workers, where that has occurred. But everything else is considerably higher that are necessities or the things that we spend. And that's why there's this disconnect between what the government is saying in some of these reports um, as well as versus what the community and what you may be feeling personally at this time. Now, we talked about gas prices. Gas prices have gone up about 20 cents in the last couple of weeks as we got to late um, uh, uh, February to March in that time frame. But I want to give you a little history here. We're actually doing better than where we were a year ago. Our, our, we're down about eight cents um, with regard to consumer uh, grade regular gas, but more importantly for inflation purposes, we did not see the run up in the gains when it comes to the diesel price on the right. So that's a positive when it comes to inflationary pressure within the supply chain. We're not seeing the same pressures that we had previously uh, on there uh, related to transportation costs on, on, on the fuel once it's in the, in the States trade update you can't talk about things without talking about two different major issues that are impacting um the uh the supply chain and moving products from the far east uh here one is the the hoodie Re rebels over in the in the canals there and the ships being attacked uh there for europe and then one that is uh is actually more impactful perhaps is the drought in the panama canal um, where they've reduced the number of containers and ships coming through there by 50% because the uh, natural water, which is used in the canal itself, there's been a major drought there that has reduced the number of ships going there. So that's had a major impact in pricing and quite honestly, probably saved the shipping market um, uh, from uh, a lot of bankruptcies. Uh, so part of this is is actually been beneficial because the rates had dropped so severely and so low for shipping a, a 40 foot container that it was no longer profitable in some cases. And uh, it, it going up to where it is certainly isn't sustainable either, but it did uh, save some companies from uh, you know going out of business there, which gets us into this yo-yo of cost that we never get the supply chain fixed um, uh, through that time frame, which affects pricing and avail product availability, et cetera. Um, when we look at the rates overall here, this shows you this is an overall rate. Um, now, if you remember back uh, during uh, late October of 21, the number for uh, a 40 foot container from Shanghai to LA was as high as $23,000. So you can see um, the drop that we've seen in those shipping rates over time. So the cost of inflation had moved from the, uh, from the shipping to the warehousing and the distribution within the US uh, for US costs. And now it's moved more and more to the cost of labor in those roles that is doing and driving any um, inflationary uh, thing. So here's also a different look at that, how you can see the spot rates and how that has gone up here in the last couple of months um, there. The reason you've got these lines is, is they basically do this rating uh, twice a month um, there. So you can see where, where things are. Uh, so you see that you went from about 2,500 to $6,000 for the East Coast. Um, part of that, a huge part of that is related to the canal 
um, there and a little less to the West Coast um, for the gains uh, there. So consumers and debt were at all time high for debt um, overall there. And that's despite uh, the uh, student loans that are being forgiven uh, for things there. So a lot of the student loan debt um, being forgiven. But uh, that being said, we've got a lot in mortgages and credit cards. Um, the, the good news is that um, the mortgages are, are in pretty good shape. And I've got a chart on that. It's the credit cards where the debt is expanding and the, and the buy now, pay later, which is affecting consumers that, that will impact uh, retail there. So uh, the, the positive news on the debt front, although we have higher debt than ever, about 90% of the mar uh, mortgages are 4% or under. So they're low, <clears throat> they're low interest mortgages. And right now, savings and CD rates are higher than the mortgage rates are. Um, I had a call with somebody the other day and they said, should I pay my house off um, there? Because I'm, I'm, I'm selling an asset. Should I pay my house off? And I'd say, normally I would say, yeah. But if you park that money in a CD or, or anything else and just save it for paying off your house, you're actually coming out positive on the deal. Uh, plus, you get the mortgage interest uh, uh, tax deduction as well there. So it's a really interesting uh, situation there. Um, you certainly get the benefits of paying off the house and, and the freedom that that gives you, the whole Dave Ramsey approach. But um, you actually make more money in a guaranteed fund if it's just sitting in a savings account or um, a CD right now. Um, the thing to keep in mind from a consumer perspective, though, is there's uh, really a huge disparity in demographics related to home ownership. And this inflation has been particularly harsh to the people that are on fixed incomes. Now, there's this earned income tax credit refund that could potentially help. There's also talk of extra stimulation checks that may come out um, there that would impact retail. Um, but uh, none of those are none of those are set, and people have to file the taxes on time to get those uh, earned income tax credit uh, refunds there that can help uh, assuage some of these costs. So all of that impacts retail. Um, and so to give you a background of uh, of sales and and what's going on there, we have to keep in mind that five trillion dollars, about two and a half trillion dollars of that went into what we look at as retail at IHL. And so you have in 2021, we added the entirety of, of retail sales of India for 2021. The U.S. added this growth. And then in 2022, we added the U.K. And in 23, we actually still grew even further without that stimulus uh, there. So um, when you look at the adjusted there, we were down just slightly um, when we had inflation adjusted. So January, we were up 2.3% uh, for the month from the government. If you look at it on an inflation adjusted, we were still positive for the month, which is really astounding uh, continue, considering the data. Now, the February data doesn't from the government doesn't come out until Thursday of this week. So we don't have that. But what we did get was the CNBC and the NRF retail monitor that came out that uh, they showed a, a significant rebound uh, in, in growth on a month to month basis, uh, for, uh, retail sales compared to where they were in terms of, of January. Um, now these not lines look high, but we're talking 1% swings here. We're not talking huge amounts, uh, their swings. And this is what it's showing. I would, I would highlight more the, on the right side of this chart, um, I don't, I'm not sure I'm buying this. The year-over-year year change that e-commerce was up 18%. It could be. This would be pure play e-commerce retailers being up 18%. Um, I just don't see that. Perhaps when it comes to the health and personal care, I could see that. <coughs> um, and uh, in clothing and accessories, that seems extremely bullish on a on a year-to-year -year basis based on the earnings and stuff that we're seeing coming out for the christmas holidays from individual retailers and i think the sporting goods and the hobby and bookstores being up that high um, is a little suspect to me um, i'm just not seeing the numbers come out from the retailers that support those numbers um, 
and particularly when you get into garden centers and and Home Depot has talked about how their numbers have been tough and Target came out and shared their numbers being tough in the in the mass merchants uh, side of things. Um, that these numbers seem a little bullish to me. So I'm curious as to what the numbers on Thursday show.